Merry Christmas. I hope you are having a wonderful week as we're getting just a couple days closer to Christmas. And I just want to thank you for joining us for our midweek Bible study. And I hope you're just uh, having a blessed week celebrating Christmas and it's the birth of Christ and, and uh, just drawing closer to Jesus this Christmas season. I'm so glad that you're tuning in to worship together through this time of prayer and this time of studying God's Word. Well, as we get started today, let me just uh, give you a couple updates on some folks, um, or just an update on one of our members. Uh, we asked you Sunday to be praying for Norma Jean Bowen because she had been falling and she was in the hospital and they were doing tests, talking to Norma Jean, and she is doing better and she should be going home. And so we just want to thank her for that. But do continue praying for Norma Jean. Uh, she is still continuing to deal with the effects of that disease he has. It caused her to lose sight in her eye and uh, should be starting treatment soon, but they can't start the treatments until she's over the shingles. So pray that God will heal her of the shingles. That is improving some, but also continue praying also for that blood clot she has in the lung and that they continue to give her medication to dissolve that. So remember Norma Jean in your prayers if you would. And then also as we are just a couple of days away from Christmas, as you can imagine, many people in our world are hurting. For various reasons. It could be the death of a loved one. They're missing that loved one this Christmas season. It could be stress. It could be anxiety. Uh, so many things that people deal with day in, day out. And actually, we're talking about that in our lesson today. And so, um, so just be praying for those that are hurting uh, in, in, around us. And maybe you're hurting, and, and it would be my privilege to pray for you. If I can pray for you, then just talk with you any way possible. I'd love for you to do that. At the end of this video, you'll see our contact information. You can call here at the church office. You can reach out through our website and you know, fill out one of the contact forms, and I'll be in touch with you. But uh, we just, we'd love to minister you through the, through the privilege of prayer. And so, but, but, but we pray also for those that are, that are hurting as well. So we, we just want to remember those this, this Christmas season. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we are thankful for the joy and privileges to come to you in prayer, Lord. And as we are getting ready to celebrate Christmas just a couple of days away, I'm so excited for, for what Christmas is all about. That's the birth of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm thankful that we get to celebrate you, Jesus, because it is all about you. And I pray we stay focused on you. I pray we, we stay in tune with you, Father. And Lord, I just pray you're glorified through this time. But also through this time, may you use it to be a, a testimony and a witness to those around us, Father. May we just uh, faithfully proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, what Christmas is all about. And as we get together with family and friends, may you keep us safe, especially in the midst of COVID-19, and, and uh, keep us safe as we travel as well. And whatever we're doing, Lord, may you just uh, be glorified, and may we just have a great time celebrating you, Jesus. Father, we continue to lift up our sister, Norma Jean, to you, Lord. I thank you that she's able to come up from the hospital, and she is doing some better, and they figured out that that disease is probably causing her to fall, and we just pray you continue to heal her of these shingles so she can start her treatments up to restore that, that sight in her one eye, Father. And Father, I just pray you also dissolve the blood clot in her lung, and just continue to encourage her and strengthen her, Father, and sustain her. And Lord, we look to those people that are hurting. Their, their life are just full of burdens, as we're talking about today. And Father, it may be the loss of a loved one, it could be uh, anxiety, it could be fear, it could be distress of what's going on in the world around us, or stress of their job, or whatever it may be. But they're longing to, to find peace, and they're hurting, Lord. And Lord, I just pray you be the God of all comfort, that you comfort them, and uh, just draw them closer to you this Christmas season. As we celebrate Christmas just a couple days away, may we truly honor and glorify you uh, this Christmas season, but also throughout the entire year as we proclaim the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to this world around us. Bless us in our Bible study today as we continue in Galatians chapter 6. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you haven't already turned there, if you would take your Bibles and turn to, to Galatians chapter 6 as we're journeying through the book of Galatians and, and uh, into chapter 6 now. And I've got a question for you as we begin. What do you do with the burdens that come into your life? I mean, let's just be honest. Life is full of burdens at times, isn't it? Every day has its assortments of anxieties, of cares, of, of burdens. And many times those burdens just weigh heavy upon us. They weigh heavy upon our hearts. I mean, you could be dealing with physical burdens. You could be dealing with emotional burdens. You could be dealing with spiritual burdens. I read about a Chinese woman one time that had, her son had died. And she was just inconsolable in her grief. And finally, she went to, to an elder there in her town they considered to be a very wise man. And he said this to her. He said, go and bring me a mustard seed from a home where there has been no sorrow. Well, she was gone for several days, and she came back to him, and she said this. She said, how foolish I have been in my grief. There is no home where there has been no sorrow. Everybody, in one way or another, has had 
has currently or will have the burdens of life. The question is, what do we do with those burdens of life? God has given us a beautiful picture here in Galatians chapter 6 which tells us how to deal with those burdens. And so that's what I want to talk about tonight as we look at this passage of Scripture in Galatians 6 of how to deal with the burdens of life. Let's see what God's Word says. We're going to be, as I said, in Galatians chapter 6, looking at verses 2 through 5. Uh, look what it says there. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work. And then he will have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. For each one shall bear his own load. You know, as we look at this passage of Scripture, we're going to see what God says of how to deal with the burdens of life. So the first thing I want you to see is this. We need to share our burdens. God wants us to share our burdens. In verse 2, it says, bear one another's burdens. That word burden there is used of a word that carries the idea of a weight, of a, of a heavy load, something that just crushes down upon a person. Uh, some people have burdens that are just crushing them down right now. And if somebody doesn't come along and help them, they feel like they're just not going to make it. They just can't survive this. They need somebody to help bear that burden. And these verses of Scripture you know, are addressed to believers. You know, If you go back and begin of the chapter, it says in verse 1, Brethren, or if you're a lady, it would say sisters. Uh, and he's talking to the family of God. And he's saying that now, that now you brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ, you who are part of the, the fellowship of the body of believers, you bear one another's burdens is what Paul is saying. And you'll find, you'll find it interesting, you know, sometimes if you do a study of the New Testament, talk about this one another commands that we're told to do for each other. It's amazing how the Bible tells us to do so much for each other as a body of Christ. You know, we're to, we're to pray for one another. We're to uh, forgive one another. And here we see we're to bear one another's burdens. You know, here's a ministry that each one of us can have to care for each other as we bear each other's burdens. Let me suggest to you, the, 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 you know, some of the burdens that we might be able to help each other out with. Sometimes we have the opportunity to bear one another's burdens and helping them bear the faults they have in their lives. I mean, that's the context here. If you look back at verse 1, it says, If a man be overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one. You know, sometimes we have the opportunity to help our brothers and sisters in Christ who are struggling with a problem, who are struggling with a fault in their life, a weakness in their life. By the way, we are not only to uh, only have our own burdens, but we have our faults as well, don't we? You know, I heard about two men who were talking. One said to the other, he said, Do you know of anybody that has no faults? And the man says, No, I don't know anyone, but I've heard of someone that has no faults. He says, Who is he? So well, I never met him, but it's my wife's first husband. You know, we all have our faults, don't we? You know, sometimes, you know, a brother or sister needs somebody who, who will come alongside them and, and help them when they're struggling with these weaknesses, these faults in their lives. And sometimes we can help bear that burden in their life. We can help uh, bear people's sorrows as well. So not, not only their faults and their weaknesses, but their sorrows. We come alongside someone who, who's lost a loved one. Uh, you know, I think about in, in my life recently, my friend who's gone home to heaven, I think about their family. I think about, you know, uh, their, their, his church, you know, and, and we can come alongside them and, and bear that burden and care for them. We can be there to, to share memories. We can be there to, to be a, an ear to listen, to be a shoulder to cry on, just to be a presence just to be felt. We can help people that are facing sorrow. We can help people that are uh, facing grief. Uh, someone just shared with me recently, one of our, one of our people that, that had just recently lost her husband, that some of our folks went by and did Christmas caroling at her house. And how much that meant to her. It really blessed her. That's helping bear that burden of sorrow. That's showing the love of Christ. And that's what we're called to do. You know, Charles Dickens, the great writer, he once said this. He said, no person is useless in this world who helps lighten the burden of someone else. And how true that is. This is one thing that each of us can do. You may not be able to do a lot of other things, but this is one thing that we can obey in Scripture and we can help that person carry that load. We can help them through this burden they're facing. I want you to show, show you one of the reasons that God lets us have burdens. It's one of the reasons God lets us have sorrows in, in, in life. And this really is a beautiful picture of how God works. It's, it's found in 2 Corinthians 1, chapter, chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. It says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort which we ourselves are, which, which we ourselves are comforted by God. And so, do you see the progression here? He is saying that one of the reasons that we're allowed to have these burdens, one of the reasons we have these troubles in life, is so that we can experience God's comfort. God wants to, to show himself as the God of all comfort to comfort us. Have you ever had a burden, a heartache, some trouble you were going through? 
And you experience, have you experienced God's comfort in your life in the midst of that heartache, that burden, that trouble? And he says that one of the reasons that happens is so that when we minister to other people in the midst of their troubles or their heartaches or their burdens, we're able to tell them about the comfort that God gave us when we were going through something that was similar or going through a heartache that we faced or a burden we faced. You know, some of you maybe have lost your spouse. You remember how hard it was. You remember that there's probably days that you would think the sun wouldn't even shine. And you didn't think you'd ever smile again. Yet in a, in a tough time, God came. He brought you his sweet comfort. And he was, he was there in a very special way. You feel his presence in a, in a, in a mighty way. He just bathed your soul with his, his wonderful comfort. And, and when you, you lost your mate, your, your, your spouse, you've experienced God's comfort. Well, maybe a few years down the road, you know, someone else you know loses their spouse. They die. And, and they think they'll never smile again. They think the same things that you thought. The sun will never shine again. And you can say, you know what? I can, I can sympathize with what you're going through. I've been there. And I can tell you that God is going to comfort you. And God is going to get you through this. Because I've experienced it myself. See, God lets us go through hard times. And He comforts us. He's so good to comfort us. But He wants us to comfort others. He wants us to help them bear their burdens. In order for us to, to help each other bear burdens, we've got to share our burdens with each other. We have to be open and honest as the family, as the body of Christ. And let me just encourage you that burdens should be shared. But notice there's a second way to deal with our burdens, and that is we must personally shoulder our burdens. Look at verse 5. It says, For each one shall bear his own load. At first, that sounds kind of contradictory to what we just talked about, doesn't it? But really, it's the north and south pole of the same truth. You know, there's a difference in the, in the use of words here. The word burden in verse 2 is a word that means weight, that crushing load I talked about. Well, the word load here in verse 5 is another form of a burden. It was used in different ways. It was used to talk about a load in a wagon. It was used to talk about the freight in a, in a ship. And in Acts 27, when they're talking about unloading that freight in a ship, that's the same word that they're using there. It's also referred to talk about a child in a mother's womb. Now, I don't know what it is to bear a burden of having a child in a mother's womb that that, that mother has to do it all by herself. But I, you know, when Laura was pregnant, I couldn't do certain things because I wasn't the woman. I wasn't pregnant. But a mother has to bear that burden, and now it's a blessing you know, that burden comes, but she can only do that by herself. And that's the idea here. You know, another terminology that this word refers to is the idea of a backpack. You could say it this way, everyone should shoulder his own backpack. The idea of putting that load on yourself. So what is it he's talking about here? He's saying that there are some burdens in life which only you can bear. And there's some burdens which you yourself must bear alone. He, and he uses that word alone there in verse 4. He talks about rejoicing in himself alone. So there's this idea of uh, sometimes when we bear these burdens, we have to do it alone. It's no one else can bear these burdens for us. There are some things we just, we just have to do ourselves and bear ourselves. Let me just suggest a couple. You know, only you can bear the burden of your own sin. And what I mean by that is you cannot expect someone else to bear that responsibility for the sin that you have committed. Now, Jesus pays the punishment for our sins. But I can't expect you to bear the burden for the sin that I committed. You know, when, when you and I sin, we bear a personal responsibility for choosing to sin. The guilt which comes with that, you know, our own personal sin is our guilt alone, our, our conviction alone. I'm not talking about imposed guilt. I'm talking about a guilt that, that is not unjustly heaped upon us, but it's, but it's something that we experience because we make that choice to sin. We have chosen to sin, therefore it's our responsibility to bear that burden. We're living in a day and age when, when people like to shift responsibility and play the blame game. You know, we want to blame everybody else. You hear silly stuff like this. I mean, I live, I live the way I do because my mother made me take a bath when I was seven years old, and that just wrecked my life. Or someone may say, you know, I'm living the way I do because my daddy made me take out the garbage. It didn't warp my personality. You know, I know that sounds silly, but people really say stuff like that. But the point is, is that, you know, there's a personal accountability for our own behavior. You have to get to the point where you say, it's not my brother like the, like the song. It's not my brother. It's not my sister. But it's me, O oh Lord. It's our responsibility. We have to pair, bear the responsibility of the choices we make. You know, that, that we have to personally ourselves go to God and ask forgiveness. You also have to bear the, the personal responsibility of living your life and how you live your life. I can't choose how you're going to live your life. You have to make that choice yourself. Nobody else can live your life for you. You have to live it for yourself. You have a work to do. God has an assignment for you. He has a purpose for you. Nobody else can take your place. Maybe you're, you're thinking, well, let so-and-so over there at the church do it. I've done my part. No, you haven't done your part. You're doing your part right now, and you haven't completed your part. Your part's not done until you get to heaven. 
But as long as you're in this world, you're called to do your part. I have a God-given purpose on my life, and I have to do it. You can't do it for me. Nobody else can do it for me. Living your own life and carrying out God's plan, God's purpose, God's will for your life is something that you have to shoulder yourself. So there are some burdens that have to be, we, we must share with others, but then there's other burdens that we have to personally shoulder ourselves. We have to carry ourselves. Now to complete this picture, we have to go to another verse of scripture. And, and if you want to go and turn there, it's Psalms 55 verse 22. But, but you know, it's a third way that we have to deal with our burdens. And this kind of rounds out the truth of how to deal with it. Listen to what Psalms 55 22 says. It says, cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you. Listen to that again. Cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you. That's just so sweet, isn't it? There are certain burdens that must be shared. We already talked about that. Bear one another's burdens. There's some burdens that we must personally deal with ourselves. Each one should bear his own load. That's what it says in Galatians 6. But praise God that the final way to deal with our burdens is this. Number three, we must cast off your burdens. Cast off your burdens. As it says there in Psalms 55, 22, cast your burdens on the Lord. Did you know that God is the great burden bearer? In 2 Corinthians 1, 3 that I read earlier, he's called the God of all comfort. When you look at the Lord Jesus Christ, as he walked on this earth, as he ministered to people, you discover that the Lord Jesus Christ, everywhere he went, he was lifting burdens off of people's lives. I mean, think about it. He was healing the sick. He was raising the dead. He was caring for those who were needy. Jesus is the great burden bearer. And he invites us to come and cast our burdens on him. And here's what happened when, 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 when we do that. There, there's one of, one of three things that we do. One, I mean, let me rephrase that. Here's what happens when we face burdens in our life. There's one of three ways we react. One is that we can we break down. We can just lose it. it just, we just collapse underneath the weight of that burden. Two, we break out. We, we kind of lash out. We react because we can't cope with it. But what God wants us to do is react the third way. Is that we break through and we cast our burdens on the Lord. He invites us to do so. Listen to 1 Peter 5, 7. It says, casting all your care on him. Why? For he cares for you. God says, cast all your burdens. Cast all your cares on me. Why? Because I care for you is what God says. He asks us to do it. He tells us to do it. God says, come and bring those burdens on me and give them to me. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty good about talking to God about my burdens. I can haul them into the Lord. I say, oh, Lord, here's all my burdens. I can't bear all these burdens by myself. I give them to you. And you know what I do? Sometimes when I'm through praying, I say, thank you, Lord, for hearing me. And then I pick those burdens back up, and I, I go at it again. And, and, and it's like I never took them to the Lord. Because I think I have to bear those burdens. Do you ever feel that way? Do you catch yourself doing something like that? If we're not very careful... We will haul our burdens to the Lord and say, Lord, I give them to you. But then we pick them right back up again and we think we have to deal with them. But God says, cast all your burdens on me. Throw your burdens on the Lord. Give them to the Lord. And this really gets good. When you, when you bring your burden to the Lord, he does one or two things for us. First thing he does, he, he may remove that burden. I mean, when, when that happens, that's as great, isn't it? I mean, how many times have you brought a burden to the Lord and, and you told him about that burden and he just reaches down and he just takes that burden right off your shoulders. He lifts that burden off your heart. And, and I just praise God for doing that. He lifts those burdens away from us. But sometimes it doesn't work that way, does it? Sometimes he doesn't lift those burdens and throw them away. But notice what the promise says. It says, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain your burden. Is that what it says? No, that's not what it says. It says this, cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you you. Jerry Vines tells of how God brought this passage home to him many years ago, and he says this. He says, I was studying this passage, and I was troubled by it. I wonder why the Lord didn't sustain the burden. I was in the midst of studying this particular passage of Scripture. My oldest daughter was just a little thing at the time. We lived in a two-story house. She had a little chair that she wanted to take upstairs to her room, but she couldn't handle it. It was too heavy for her, and she couldn't navigate it up the stairs. The burden was too heavy, and she couldn't do it. She began to cry. She came to me with her chair, carrying it and holding up the chair. I saw immediately what the situation was. I saw what needed to be done. In an instant, I just reached down under her body, picked her and the chair up, and I started walking up the stairs. I got halfway up, and it dawned on me. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he shall sustain you. He goes on to say this. He hit, it hit me. The Lord says, you come to me just like your daughter came to you, and I'll do for you just exactly what you did for your daughter. You bring your burdens to me. I may not remove that burden, but I'll pick you and your burden up, and I will take care of you. You've talked to the Lord about your burdens. You've prayed about your burdens, and he hasn't removed those burdens. 
But we're promised there in Psalms 55 that he will sustain you. That is, he will lift you up. He will take you and your burden and carry you, and he will sustain you. I heard about a dear, sweet old older lady who, who got on a bus and she had a very heavy package. She sat down on her lap and she was struggling to hold that package in her lap and just keep it there because it was so heavy. And really it was weighing her down. And the driver happened to see it in his rearview mirror and, and he said, Ma'am, if you just take your package and you put it in the aisle there, I'll take you and in your package where you need to go. So essentially what God is saying to us is, look, bring your burden to me. I don't care how heavy it is, but I will take care of you and I will take care of your burden. Listen to what it says in Psalms 147, verses 3 and 4. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars. He calls them all by name. Isn't that an astounding verse? I mean, he knows the number of stars out there. You know, last night, you know, we had that, uh, that uh, people were calling the Christmas star, the conjunction of the planets and everything. And I went out and looked, and, and you could see how bright it was up in the sky and everything. But, but it's just amazing to look up and see all the bright stars out there. I mean, astronomers tell us there's more stars out there than we can possibly imagine. They're numberless by our, by, by our concern. We can't number them all. But you know what the Bible says there in, in, in Psalms 147, 3 and 4? It says God knows exactly how many stars are there. And it goes further. It says not only does he know how many, but he knows them by name. If God knows the name of every star, I assure you he knows your name. And he, I assure you that he knows exactly the burden that's upon your heart today. Therefore, if verse 4 is true that God knows all the names of the stars, verse 3 is also true that says this, He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Maybe you're broken harder today. Let me encourage you. Bring your heavy load. Bring your burden to Jesus. Do what that song says that you hear sung sometimes. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, he gladly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. I cannot bear these burdens alone. I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me. Jesus alone. Let me encourage you today, the burdens that you're facing in life, tell them to Jesus. Cast all your cares, cast all your burdens on the Lord. Know that what you're facing, you're not alone. We're here for you. Jesus is here for you. And we love to help you share your burdens. We love to help you shoulder your burdens. Even those burdens you have to shoulder by yourself. But know this, God wants you to cast all your burdens on Him so He can help you. Father, we thank you for the promise of your word. That in the tough times of life, no matter what we're going through, the burdens we're facing, you showed us in your word how to deal with them. That we can share with others so they can help us bear them. And yes, some we have to shoulder ourselves personally, but we can still cast those burdens to you, Lord. And you will sustain us. You will strengthen us, Lord. And we thank you for that. So, Father, I pray for those people that are watching this right now. Their heart is heavy. Their heart is broken. They're weighed down. That right now, they will cast their burdens on you. Lord, I pray they'll reach out to us and let us help them to pray for them, to be here to support them any way we can, to counsel with them, whatever it may be, to show them what your word says, Father. Use us to share the love of Christ with them, Father. But Father, we thank you that we don't have to bear these burdens of life alone. You have showed us and taught us how to deal with the burdens of life, and we give you praise. We ask Jesus, we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for watching today. I just I hope you have a wonderful, powerful, exciting day. Merry Christmas. God bless you.